Welcome back. This is the debate on the Premier League preview show. Today we are asking the most obvious question, really, after events at Old Trafford. We are asking, is Eric Ten Hag the man to bring back the glory days to Man United? Is Ten Hag the man to bring back the glory days to Man United? All of a sudden, United are in the news for, for more pleasant reasons than after the 4 0 <laughs> to Liverpool. So we are asking if the Dutchman is the man to bring back the glory days. Um, Elika, let me take your thoughts. I don't know if... Mm -hmm. if um, yeah, can he? Is he the man to do it? Well, I look at United and whatever is wrong with the team, and I see, I see the team in tatters from top. I see the officials, I mean the board, have it wrong. The players are not good enough. The manager wasn't good enough. So there needed to be a solution in different aspects of the team. For now, I feel they've got the manager right. But that's just one of the many issues around the okay. club. So in Eric Ten Hag, they've got a manager who in three years' time will set the club at least on the right path. Okay. I look at Eric Ten Hag and I, I see the buzz around his ex, his signing and all that and I understand it. You look at what he's done at Ajax, the kind of football he plays at Ajax. And that tells me that and I'm I'm just thinking, look, even if this manager doesn't win the Premier League or Champions League or any trophy, of course you have to win one trophy at least. Mm -hmm. Of in the, at the end of his three years, mm -hmm. what I, I think should be guaranteed from Eric Ten Hag is he sets this club on the right path okay. in terms of the player recruitment, mm. in terms of the style and identity of the team, and in terms of a, a, a structure, a team structure. And one, more, one important thing people forget, team balance. So I, um, that is one, that is my only then I, um, I'm expecting okay. of him, and I think he's going to do it for Manchester United. So, so, so you don't think that he will probably bring back the glory days fully? You, you think that he'll set the team up for what, the next big step? Um, that's the least requirement I, I'm, I'm expecting okay. of him. Okay. I'm thinking this United team, is there's a lot of mess in this United team. Okay. There are a lot of players who need to be shifted on, but there are also some who need to be shifted on on huge salaries. So mm. it's going to be a lot of work to be done in this team, and I'm not... From looking at, sitting in from the outside, I'm not looking at him and saying he has to win a title, he has to win this. No. From, if I was a United fan, I would, have, I, would think, I would be thinking, allow this man sort out the mess. Then maybe, even if he's not able to win at the end of his three years, he sets the team, he up, sets for the the team up for someone to come take. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you, you mentioned United having problems in layers. So you yes. feel that the coaching appointment makes sense. Yes. So I mean, what do you think should be done to clean out whatever problems there are? In the last few years, United's transfer strategy has been very poor. I, don't know, I do not think they buy with a plan. And it's, it's something I, I, I look, I've tried to find explanation to some of their transfers. And I don't think, I think what they do is have players scouted for a long period of time. And when they do not get some targets they want initially. They just go in for those ones. Mm. Not necessarily in sync with the coach's plan or maybe whatever they want to do with the team. So th that is my major criticism for them. So for, for that, they need to get it right. They need to get someone to take care of the transfers. Okay. So that is also one at the official level. The board, the CEO and uh, Richard Arnold, and wh whatever is happening with the Glazers, they need to sort that out too. Okay. Interesting stuff there. Interesting thoughts from Eric. Sydney, um, you are more of the United persuasion. I'm sure I know how you feel about the appointment. The man takes over July 1. Is he the one to bring back the days of winning 5 0, 5 0, 5 0, 5 0, cups overflowing? <laughs> <laughs> I would say he's the one. And okay. that's been being very optimistic because, as Elikem has rightly pointed out, there's a lot of issues that need to be sorted okay. out. But it's a, it's a good first step. And I think we are, we are seeing the fruits of. Uh, Ranek's more of his road upstairs. It's more of an uh, advisory role because I don't think we'd have United would have gone for Ten Hag if not Ranek was not there. I think would, uh, United have gone for Pochettino because that's a coach they have been uh, they have been pursuing for for years now, and they, they've been you no know, they, they've tagged them to be the one. The saviors come and save United. Then out of nowhere, Ten Hag has just come to cross him and. I think that, that has partly to do with uh, the influence of Rannick. And mm. I think Rannick also has a large role to play if United is going to be successful because he is going to take the consultancy role. And I'm hearing uh, sounds of him recruiting a Paul Mitchell, former Monaco, former Spurs uh, top guy to come and uh, join him. There are rumblings of 
Steve in which role? As what technical director? Yes, as a director. So Darren Fletcher leaves. Yes, Darren Fletcher leaves. That excites leaves. me greatly. <laughs> that, that, because you see people like Fletcher, what, what, what's their qualifications to be in the position they are at United? Look at people like John Meta. What are their, what are their qualifications to be the head of planning, uh, planning a successful title charge, a successful European campaign, successful recruitment for a team? Like, they don't have that kind of expertise. They don't have that kind of... Uh, that, that kind of experience. Okay. And for a team like United, with the riches they have, you should be able to go out and get the best in the market for certain positions, certain roles, roles that are sensitive, roles that are crucial to the success of any football team. And United have been stumbling all over the place, getting this wrong time and time again. At least now we have seen Woodward out. Now we have seen uh, just this week news came out that the, the, the club's head coach, head scouts and uh, head of recruitment have also been disp- dispensed with uh, awaiting new new appointments from I think uh, advice from Manik or, or, or dictates who comes in next. So it's looking like there are a lot of positive moves being made behind the scenes, and there will be there will need to be more of that to provide Ranik, to provide Ten Hag the framework in which he can succeed because he has the ideas. He has we have seen what he can do. We have seen mm. the kind of football he can play, and this team needs. You have seen that he's a, indeed he's not just a manager. He's a coach. And United need a coach. You know, you don't need somebody to just come and manage players' egos and just you know take, let them feel free. They need a, a coach to come and coach them in the basic rudiments of the game because it seems as if from they have forgotten how to even defend as a team, how to attack, <laughs> how to how to just contain a, 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 a opposition as a team. They have forgotten all these things. So they need a coach to come and, and take them to. No, a refresher course, uh, if you like it. It <laughs> starts all over again. Just teach them how to play football again. <laughs> and I think that's, uh, that's something Ten Hag can do. Okay, just, just, by just final note. Um, both of you seem to think that Eric Ten Hag, at least in terms of the appointment, makes sense. What do you think should be his f- the first thing he does? Um, between now and when he... Of- because clearly, between now and when he officially takes charge, I'm sure he will be making moves on the quiet. For me... Um, for me, off the top of my head, I think it's one issue that is prevalent in this Manchester United team. What does he do with Harry Maguire as captain of Manchester United? Wow. It is one of the issues he needs to set to sort out because you feel that he should. He it has should, gone. It's a priority. It has gone beyond trolling to actual abuse at a Manchester United captain. For you, the Manchester United team has a lot of issues tactically, but when you look at the the main issues, what he can solve right now. What he can solve right now without even starting a, starting a job is what he does with him as a captain. I personally think Ten Hag is going to try to work with him for at least a season to try to see how best he can use him to his best capabilities. But I, whatever is happening with Harry Maguire, the disconnect between a Manchester United captain and the fans needs to be solved and it needs to be settled. Okay. Sydney, the first thing he has to do, he has to get the... Uh, the, the uh, in consultation with the board and running, he has mm-hmm. to get the right person in for uh, player recruitment because now we have seen that the head scout has been sacked. Jim Lola and Marcel Bout. Yes, they are both out. Yeah. So the, the first thing he has to do is he has to consult with Rannick and uh, John Bertal uh, to be able to get the right person in that room if it's going to be Paul Mitchell, whoever is going to come in because that is going to dictate how the season is going to go. Mm-hmm. Because you, as uh, Rannick said, we can't have about 10 incomings. And we can't afford... Isn't, isn't, isn't that a bit too huge? I don't think it's too huge, Nathan. Because Ten. look at the look at the place out of contract, number one. I get that. That's and a, that's and look at lot. what the team needs on top of the players who are even leaving. But I think it's about 10 new players you have, to re, you have to integrate, groom, teach. He himself has to understand this league. Yes, and then oh, the wow. to do it because he's now coming in fresh. He's with new ideas, with a new style of play. So he can only implement that with players okay. who can fit what he wants to do in the long term, in the medium in the medium term. So I don't think 10 is... I think if it was up to me, 20, 20 would be good enough because I don't think any of the players in the team right now, the gear, I don't think he deserves... Exactly. You can go to one by one. And none okay, of so them, it means essentially United have to essentially... Put together a new team ahead of next a season. A fresh new team. A Hungry team. players, players with desire, players wow. who are not coming just to for a paycheck, players who are not coming to just okay. you know compose stuff on their Instagram and Twitter and they said new players who are hungry, who have the desire to represent the team to the best of their abilities. And that's what needs to be had. All to right. Be done. We'll see. We'll see what, what happens 
um, to Man United, Eric Ten Hag officially starts work on July 1. We'll see what recruitments are done. Rag Ragnick says at me, as many as 10 players could potentially come. That's a lot. But, so that, I mean, you, you can decide. Look, if you're watching us, you can send us your thoughts. The debate can also continue. We're asking him for Rag Ragnick is the man to bring back the glory. Yes, no, I can't tell. Anyway,